I have introduced and we have listened to uh, Ms. Antje Becker-Benton. Let's see if we get her up here. She is the Managing Director and Behavioral Change and Community Health at Save the Children. And she will join us digitally from Washington. Um, so we will just see when she comes up here on Zoom, I hope. There she is. Hello, <laughs> Antje. Good morning. Morning. Yeah. How are you? And morning, morning for you, or actually I would call it night for you, but we, we pretend it's morning for you and we're very glad you're here. <laughs> so, um, before Antje starts, um, she and I would uh, like to invite you all for a short uh, check in the room. So, I will ask you three questions and you are asked to respond through your body movements. So, the first question is, who has worked in development of food systems? And you stand up by, ans you answer by standing up. I as assume everyone would stand up, no? If you're working in health, that, we include that, right? So, yeah, it's, keep standing, please. <laughs> Are you sure you're not worked in development of food systems? Okay, then the next question is, who of you who are standing up then has been involved in social behavioral change work within food systems? And then you raise your arm if you uh, are on this one. Great. And now, hang on, keep your arm up. This is the morning exercise as well. So those of you who, have, who, did, who didn't reply to the first question, you may stand up just to get a bit of movement. <clears throat> and who has been involved in social and behavioral change work in the Global South? And now, if you have done that, you jump. Great. And then you can also all wave behind you, because then I think Antje sees your faces a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So, with that, thank you for engaging, and I will leave the floor and screen to you, Antje. Thank you very much, and good morning, everyone, and thanks for engaging in this exercise. Um, it helps me to understand my audience a little better. As mentioned, I'm joining you from Washington, D.C., where it's still dark. Um, <clears throat> And I'm happy to join your um, great session this morning. I will present um, about uh, social and behavior change today, um, starting off with my latest trip to Karamoja in Uganda. You can see that on the map on the uh, left side. I'll talk more about what social and behavior change is and about individual versus collective action. Um, about refined approaches in nutrition, some learning from a multi-sectoral program in Cambodia, and then go into key takeaways and then look forward to your questions. As mentioned, I just came back from Uganda uh, with uh, a raging Ebola outbreak, actually. Um, and what is interesting about it is that this time it's near Kampala. Uganda has quite a bit of experience with Ebola outbreaks, seven times already, and effectively, um, you know, worked worked on these outbreaks. But this time, people jumped out of their hospital beds um, and disappeared from the case controls um, because they thought it has to do with witchcraft. Uh, and um, that is one of the reasons I called my presentation Culture Eats Slowly for Breakfast, um, because obviously people were less informed, have less trust in their health system, and just disappeared, basically, um, and tried to go to traditional doctors. So what is eating Karamoja here, a very remote area, rural area in Uganda, an underserved area, as um, the previous speaker mentioned, there are these areas in Uganda. And this is an area that is currently eaten for breakfast by a quite toxic combination of climate change, COVID, land grab, and traditional cultural raiding, which is now armed um, and is leading to violent conflict. And all of this on the backdrop of widely perpetuated bias against this population there. And I've been working on a food security project there for the last five years, and we have to admit that the food security situation due to this toxic combination is actually worse than we, when we started the project five years ago. 
<clears throat> so this as a backdrop, I think, for, for further discussions on social and behavior change, what can affect basically a project, large project, um, in an area that is affected by this combination of issues, which we will see also in other countries in the future. Um, so what does SBC have to do with any of this? Social and behavior change is a discipline and has methods that can unravel a little bit, you know, how people react to such situations, why they react that way, what their norms, values, and traditions are. And those are not always negative. They can also be assets for change, by the way. So social and behavior change is the systematic application of interactive processes and strategies based on theory and research to address social and behavior change at the individual, community, and societal levels. And you can see on the right side that it's grounded in social and behavioral sciences, but not enough with that. So it's not just behavioral sciences, it's also mass communication, it's marketing, it's design, and it's community development and advocacy. When dealing with social and behavior change, we're not only working at the individual level with nudges, which are very popular, I hear, in Europe at the moment, or behavioral insights, but we can also find out when that can backfire as a motivating strategy to, in, uh, to address individuals only. In Karamoja, for example, we found through our qualitative formative research that Karamojong norms and tribal code are based on the belief that change is the effect of dialogue and collaboration as a community, um, not the achievement of an individual. So we were told the story of a woman who was given a goat because she has been such a role model in her community. And two days later, the goat was stolen and it was also eaten. And the community told us that we should not create envy and that success stories are never just due to one person. They could, they could, have, they could not have done it alone and it's always a, um, a group that is responsible for such change. And so in solution, we developed um, positive deviant stories um, on the radio through community reporters that we trained that found basically stories of community self-organization. And we worked with elders on the radio to debunk some of um, the myths that were part of, of, the, um, of those stories, but highlighted basically how people self-organized without any projects and came up with community solutions as a group. Um, I think this highlights where we are not just saying behavior change, but there is an S in front of the social and behavior change, and the S stands for social and structural. So social change is not simply the accumulation of changes at the individual level, it needs transformation of social norms and structures influencing such decisions. For example, to make certain health practices more acceptable, nutrition practices more acceptable, equip mothers and families with social resources and networks, um, bring communities together around common problems, and prompt also stakeholders through ad advocacy to support such action. So that's important to understand how we go about social and behavior change. Quick overview, how we have changed over time. You may remember the times when we talked about IEC, Information, Education, Communication, and that has changed over time to behavior change communication, social and behavior change communication. And in the 2000s, we finally arrived at SBC to um, de-emphasize that communication is the only methodology we're using in this area of work. And then human-centered design and behavioral insights came to pass, which are integrated under the larger umbrella of social and behavior change. We have a large toolbox. Um, sometimes we even call it the tool shed. Um, and you can see a variety of, of approaches here, including community engagement, uh, advocacy, digital health. And now to SPC for nutrition. Um, it's often using in our area of work, which is international work. Um, I work for Save the Children, by the way. Um, and often on large integrated programs. And these are uh, in food security using often a set of outreach and small group activities in their SBC strategies. And uh, what you're looking at here is 
uh, when project coordinators work with trained volunteer promoters or paid community health workers, depending on the country, to address existing care groups, women groups and saving groups in the community, to reach women of reproductive health, as well as their family members, to improve household level maternal, infant and young child nutrition, um, addressing knowledge, attitudes, practices, and social norms to prevent stunting and wasting and promote optimal nutrition. Um, the approaches that we're often looking at um, are here again. So it's starting off with training of community health workers in the areas of nutrition, <clears throat> but also adding on facilitation skills sometimes or participatory um, methodologies identifying and collaborating with um, care groups, uh, sometimes also setting them up with mother leaders, um, also looking into women's groups and savings groups. Um, what is often done are cooking demonstrations, um, also with the help sometimes of um, husband schools or male champions, um, addressing savings groups to have a more comprehensive approach, promoting also community gardening, and often amplifying um, success stories through local and digital media. Um, the newest recommendations um, from the USAID Advancing Nutrition Project, which is a global project that spearheads, uh, among other things, also Nutrition SPC, shows and bro has broadened the set of audiences that can be addressed with SPC um, for comprehensive nutrition projects. So, beyond the usual community leaders and the health workers, from family members um, and religious leaders, you're also looking at um, transporters, at retail market vendors and at policymakers as audiences for social and behavior change. Um, with some bullets underneath um, detailing out what uh, could be approached with them through social and behavior change. Um, what is important and what is a bit of a challenge also uh, in SPC is that not all behaviors are created equally and um, in these large projects it's often important to figure out are we triggering new nutrition behaviors, are we maintaining behaviors or are we embracing the last 20% of a population that is not breastfeeding um, because that uh, warrants different approaches and triggering new behaviors is actually easier than the other two by far. Also, some behaviors are um, very, can be triggered by messaging or can be reminded of by messaging, but then there are some that are often habitual and many of the nutrition and especially sanitation behaviors are habitual, which are not as, uh, you know, reactive to messaging. And so the approach depends very much on the attributes of the behaviors that we're trying to change, habitual or planned, one-off or long-term, privately or in public, and so forth. So these are all things and categories that, and, and basically checklists we're using to basically define and design our approaches. Now, um, not enough with that, that is the behavioral part, but um, agriculture components need to ensure availability of nutritious foods and encourage efficient use of income for nutrition. So it's not enough to have an SPC component. We need to either closely collaborate or have different components in these projects. Same with the care groups, they can increase demand for health services, but they cannot improve the quality and responsiveness um, of services. And so social accountability and quality improvement activities are needed. Care groups can also promote improved hygiene practices, um, but uh, improved sanitation and community organizing are essential for improved water and sanitation behaviors in the community. And last but not least, and which is often a large barrier, women and girls can change norms on their own. Many of the barriers and moderators for positive change are external for mothers and for girls. <clears throat> Now, I told you I wanted to uh, give some lessons learned from a, um, one of these more comprehensive programs. Um, this is an example of such program. It was the Save the Children Let Nourish program in Cambodia, which ended um, two to three years ago. 
and nourish targeted audiences, um, including rural families, local leaders, and business leaders through advocacy, media, and interpersonal communication and a strong community engagement component. Um, you see here the tagline Grow Together, just um, to talk about what we also do, you know, uh, um, developing um, social and behavior change platforms and um, logos. And this logo is particularly interesting. Grow Together has a, has a profound meaning in Khmer and can, can be interpreted in, in a personal way. Um, it's a logo of a village with a rising sun behind and interlocking helping hands as fertile fields, which evokes feeling of feelings of the future, everyone desires, where families and communities unite and everyone plays their role for children to grow well. And the young rice, green, even the colors have a meaning, golden and yellow colors signify growth and prosperity. To rural Cambodian families, this has been developed together with audiences and thoroughly tested, but you can see we're also um, having a strong uh, marketing component here. So um, the, um, the project prioritized um, a couple of behaviors. And you see here with the first 1,000 days, uh, families at its core, the campaign focused on the improved diet and antenatal care during pregnancy. Um, for water hygiene and sanitation, the campaign promoted drinking clean water construction of improved latrines, washing hands with soap at critical times, as well as separating animals from small children and properly disposing infant feces. For agriculture, the campaign focused on the promotion of water saving micro gardens, collecting nutritious foods around the house, as well as safe preservation and storage of small fish. And a very interesting part was that um, it was also included the development of oops, small fish powder, including a cookbook and training courses on how to uh, develop fish powder for better nutrition. And um, altogether, Nourish reduced stunting in children under five years by 19% and reduced women's underweight and anemia supported by significant changes in key behaviors across key health, nutrition, wash, and agriculture. Um, so uh, an effective, um, large, uh, coordinated, and a comprehensive program at that. There are also programs that focus only on one behavior, Alive and Thrive, for example, only on breastfeeding, which was all so successful, but um, few programs have, I think, the luxury to focus on one behavior only. Hence my takeaways from this presentation, and I hope you have lots of questions. Social and behavior change goes beyond individual level programming and messaging. Nutrition SPC can be well combined within multi-sectoral interventions. Complexities stripped away when selecting only one focused behavior or one prototype or not, which is oft currently often done tend to come back in when implementing at scale. So often it's very small projects that try that out in design, but once you basically implement at scale, all the complexities come swinging back at you. And then back to my initial story about uh, Karamoja, issues of climate change and conflict around reducing and reduced resources require from us a combination of emergency development and resilience programming, including SBC, as a cross-cutting component, um, and that basically is important for food security and nutrition programs around the world. Thanks very much. I'm looking forward to your questions. And back to you, ladies. Thank you very much, Antje. And now.